one of the greatest hazards at sea. Prompt action by a well-trained crew could make the difference between saving the vessel or losing her altogether. Coordinating the firefighting teams relies on command and control. This film concentrates on setting up the emergency organization and the command and control at the point of the fire emergency. The first task of command and control is to provide the three C's of naval strategy. Coordination, communication and control. Right from the first moment the fire is reported, these three processes must be established quickly. Otherwise, the fourth C, chaos, will take over. The organization of firefighting on board depends on the size of the ship and crew. But typically, the master has the coordinating role on the bridge or at some other place on the ship if the bridge is out of action. The officers and crew are organized into different parties. One or more attack parties, backed up by the first aid, engine room and support parties. The selection of members for the parties is usually made when crew members join the ship. Although they should be interchangeable, the parties should be kept together as units. Each unit has specific duties. With all the parties, members should be chosen taking into account their experience, physical condition, age and special knowledge. It's important to consider even such things as claustrophobic tendencies, especially in relation to wearing breathing apparatus or going into confined spaces. On scene commander, radio check with team leader, receiving over. On ships with only one emergency party, the chief officer will usually take charge. You're loud and clear also. If the fire is in the engine room, the second engineer will automatically take over. Close the door! Close the door! Chain of positions. Having formed the parties, the next task is to ensure they are fully trained. All crew members must be familiar with the various alarm systems and sounds on board ship. They also need to know the location of the telephones, from where they can report to the bridge if portable VHF radios are not available. The crews must know where to muster and the quickest route to the muster point. They must know where to obtain the necessary equipment breathing apparatus, protective clothing, and so on. Okay. On mustering, a roll call is taken by the leader of the party. If a person is missing, the leader must notify the bridge and start a search immediately. This emphasizes just how essential it is that all members of the crew muster quickly and have their names checked off promptly when the alarm is sounded. The support party is vital to the emergency party. They fetch additional equipment and extra air cylinders for the BA sets. The support party will often provide boundary cooling or boundary starvation 
and remove potential fuel from bulkheads adjacent to the fire zone. You two of you, follow me and you go up to the bridge. On instruction from the bridge, they will lower and prepare the boats. They bring up extra water and blankets, the lifeboat radio, VHF radios, SARTs and EPIRB. They ensure that the plug is in position and check the engines. The muster point for the engine room party is in the engine control room. This team is responsible for maintaining power supplies, ensuring the main engine is available for manoeuvring, stopping and starting machinery, and isolating affected electric circuits and equipment. They must check all pumps and make sure the emergency pump and generator are working properly. The first aid party, usually headed by the cook steward, will muster at the exit to the hospital. They collect stretchers, blankets, first aid kit and a resuscitator pack. The resuscitator may be needed to help anyone overcome by smoke and fumes. Okay guys. Smell of smoke. Drills should always be taken seriously and include everyone. However, it's equally important to make them interesting and meaningful. Design the exercises to simulate the tackling of real incidents and make them as realistic as possible. Some drills should cover training in the use and maintenance of equipment. This includes fire extinguishers, hoses and nozzles, breathing apparatus, protective clothing and rescue equipment. Take the opportunity to operate and test the watertight doors, vents, fire dampers and similar devices. The type of mock emergency and its location should be varied from drill to drill. A supposed fire in the Foxhall paint store. A specific part of the accommodation. The pump room and so on. This will test procedures and reveal any potential problems. In some drills, close off parts of the ship to represent fire areas. Crew must find other routes to the muster points and the supposed fire. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. Problem train? Yeah. The time taken from the sounding of the alarm to the mustering at stations should be noted. If possible, improve upon it from drill to drill. Test communications. Note any blind spots for radio contact and find alternative positions for transmitting. The whole purpose of fire drills is to make everyone aware of what to do in an emergency. The training helps people to work efficiently in teams. And it inspires confidence by good leadership and example. After a drill involving a mock incident, it is an ISM requirement that officers and crew review the exercise in the light of the contingency plan. Is there something that needs changing? Could the incident have been handled better? Having looked at the theory, let us follow a real incident from start to finish. 
launch. This incident could happen on almost any ship. The procedures and problems would be similar. A steward comes out of a lift and finds the passage full of smoke. Fire! Fire! The smoke is coming from the laundry room. Is there anybody in there? Hearing no one, he shuts the door and sounds the alarm. Fire! Fire! Where? Where? He tells another seaman that there is a fire. fire On the bridge, the alarm has been heard. The steward reports the fire. Yeah, there's a, there's a fire on the laundry on the low bridge there. The engines are put on standby. Standby engines. Attention. There's a fire in the lower bridge deck. All crew must report immediately to their station. Crews are mustering. Hoses are run out whilst the breathing apparatus party don their equipment and go through their pre-entry safety checks. All the training and drills have been working towards getting men and the right equipment to the seat of the fire as quickly as possible. The leader of the first aid party reports that two men are missing from his party. The priority is to find these men and bring them out to safety. Using walkie-talkies, the officer in charge will be able to communicate with the team while they're inside. If this equipment is not available, then a good briefing is doubly important. Fire team number one has only 10 minutes of air. I repeat, 10 minutes remaining. The fire party leader informs the master that the BA team number one has 10 minutes of air left. Remember, this is only a guide. The actual time left will depend on how hard they're working, how much heat and humidity they've experienced, and the physiology and training of the men concerned. Control, this is one. Uh, the chief officer the discusses with the master whether the there are any areas that could be boundary cooled or boundary starved. I agree. You should put the support team onto boundary cooling. And any measures that may be taken to control the spread and removal of heat and smoke. Inside the fire area, a casualty has been found. He is given oxygen from the resuscitator pack. At the same time, they prepare to carry him out. Keeping together, the firefighters tackle the fire with water spray. The chief officer orders some selective ventilation to remove smoke and steam from the fire zone. The support party brings up more BA cylinders. The rescue party find a second casualty. During a condition of panic, the casualty acted against his training. He went into a very smoky area without considering a route of escape. It is vital to keep your back towards the escape route. Never get into a situation where the fire can come between you and your exit. At the scene of the fire, the firefighters are successful and the fire is under control. They check for any other possible danger spots and then, as the air is running out, return to report. A fire watcher is sent in to guard against the possibility of re-ignition. This check extends to all six sides of the fire zone. 
This includes areas that might have been endangered by secret fires spread through trunking, void spaces or other routes. Like us to, um, review Later, in the conference room, a review is held. The master calls together the leaders of the various parties to investigate the incident and review, re-evaluate and refine procedures. With that fire, clearly communication played an extremely important role. Communication is of the utmost importance to everyone in an incident. And that may well mean everyone on board. Yes, Captain, I understood, yeah. The radio check Communication the should consist of rapid and precise transfer of information. I repeat, ten minutes remaining. The identification of the source, in other words, who is speaking and from where. To avoid any misunderstanding, orders should be repeated back by the receiver. Walkie-talkies are versatile communication media, and modern sets are extremely efficient. However, they should be kept charged and ready for action at all times. With some BA sets, communication is built into the helmet. Even so, always talk slowly and clearly. This is all the more important when using a walkie-talkie as the listener may be in a noisy situation. Sometimes it is better to have another person using the walkie-talkie at a location. This allows the officer in charge to concentrate on the overall problem. His time is not then over-occupied with messages. Command and control by the officer in charge at the point of incident is vitally important. It needs firm and imaginative leadership. The delegation of duties to the right person. Constant vigilance. And clear communication with the master. The safety of the ship and the lives of all on board depend on it. This video tell program is part of a series of five on firefighting at sea. Program one deals with fire prevention. Program two deals with basic firefighting. Program four with command and control by the master. And program five with machinery space fires.